Hi everyone, this is the NINS uh, global community call for the Open COVID-19 initiative. Uh, it's been officially two months that we started this in initiative uh, together. It has grown uh, beautifully and the quality of the projects are really incredible. Um, and uh, we'll be announcing the results from the second round for the Dragon Micro Grant, so it's very exciting. Uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to hearing more about uh, your updates, uh, you guys. So be before that, uh, I would be sharing some general updates from um, the program. Um, so we just had the new partnership with uh, a new hackathon, which is the MIT COVID-19 Africa Challenge uh, that uh, MIT has put in place. It's happening this weekend. Uh, and we'll be supporting also uh, some of the winning teams that gets into the philosophy also of, also of this community, meaning that it's an open source project uh, and it's doing some R&D. Um, there, 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 there is some brainstorming going on and we had some, uh, like we have some beautiful projects uh, around uh, medical devices in this community and talking with APHP uh, at some point where we see actually more and more results coming in, it's like, what's the next step? Um, and it seems that the logical step would be to consolidate uh, some of those projects together in order to create uh, an open ICU, like um, a collection of technologies that, can, that are affordable and open source uh, that can be deployed easily uh, in, you know, everywhere that you can uh, and could come together. And so the idea is to create this kind of collection and also of uh, synergy between those, uh, those equipments. And, uh, we'll be, we'll be uh, sharing more news about how we want to, to, to bring this, but the idea is to start with uh, an open collection uh, of technology, and we call this challenge Open ICU uh, for in Intensive Care Unit. Um, so that's, that's exciting. Um, and um, that's pretty much it uh, in general. I don't want to spoil too much you know, of uh, what's going on. Uh, I think I'm just going to introduce also Kristen Elliott, who has been very, uh, very helpful. I put so much work uh, in organizing this second round uh, of uh, application for the Jogol Micro Grants. And uh, we've been, again, uh, very impressed by, by the project that you've put up. Uh, it's really of high quality. And, uh, and we've got uh, almost 50 reviews for Trev projects this time. Uh, and at the end, we use the same cutoff as, uh, as the last time. Uh, and so we are funding this time eight projects, uh, which amounts to a total of uh, 14,000 euros that will be distributed to uh, in, in Jogo Micro Grants. Um, so um, nothing too much. Um, Chris, Elliot, are you here to, uh, to present some more details about, uh, about the reviews? Hello, I'm here. I'm not sure if Chris is, but uh, I am, I'm ready and waiting. Um, okay, so let's do, do, do. I will share my screen if that is okay. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Okay. Can we can we see that? Is that is that working? Yeah. Right. Okay. Great. So um, as Thomas said, um, very impressive. Uh, you know, second round of uh, of reviews. Um, this kind of gives you a general overview of what kind of projects uh, you know Joker received. Um, so. Quite, quite a few more kind of data analysis modeling projects this time around. Um, still quite a few PPE projects, uh, as well as medical hardware design, and uh, a few more education projects as well, which is uh, definitely great to see. We want to see more education projects, so we're very, very happy to see those. Okay, so um, this is the, uh, the overall rating of uh, each of the projects. So as we can see, basic respirator, scored the, the highest overall. Um, and then the low cost syringe pump, so it's another medical, uh, medical design. Um, quantified flu, which is a, um, a really great uh, medical kind of wearables tracking app software. So that's, uh, that's always good to see. Um, as well as uh, more uh, monitoring of lamp tests, um, more masks, uh, and then education uh, education topics quite high as well so we, we, uh, we always like to see see those so as Thomas said um, this this graph 
hopefully you can see this, uh, displays the actual cutoff. Um, so these are the eight projects that we decided were, were, were worth funding. Um, again, some really, really great projects there. Um, and you'll be contacted about uh, the funding for those later on. Um, so we kind of measured uh, in terms of design score, first of all. So of, of the reviews, we asked, okay, what, what do you think um, about the quality of the design? Um, as you can see, the, uh, the syringe pump and the, uh, the respirator scoring very highly here, as well as some of the education projects as well. Um, as well as timeline, we have the progress of the projects, both of these scoring quite highly in terms of the uh, syringe pump and the, um, the respirator again. Um, so I will move on to this slide, just to say again, um, the eight projects, uh, as Thomas said, around 14,000 euros. Um, there, was, there was a slight issue in terms of uh, budgeting. We kind of ask if the projects can be a bit more clear you know, in terms of their breakdown of budgeting. Um, because some, some projects didn't give any budgeting at all. Um, and unfortunately, that kind of um, restricted us from giving any funding. So um, we kind of you know, encourage projects to make sure they read the, the actual um, the proposal templates uh, and make sure that they have all the key information in there that, uh, that they, they, they can include. Um, yeah, we also, we also uh, ask uh, for more reviewers as well. So if you, if you go onto the, uh, the program page for the reviewing, uh, then uh, you're more than welcome. Uh, and we will, we will definitely um, appreciate, you, appreciate you being there. Thank, okay. you. thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you. I think, I think there is a little uh, mistake. It's um, eight projects uh, and not seven. Um, hey, that's all right. <laughs> uh, but that's, that's very, um, um, th thank you for that. So as, as Eot said, we're, this is the second round, and so we're in a learning process. And uh, for us to, to, to get feedbacks about what has been your experience of doing the reviews, uh, of being reviewed, is very important so that we can improve it. Uh, as this is becoming a real core aspect uh, of Drogo here in this program. Um, so, so please get in touch with Elliot and, uh, and Chris uh, to, sh to share some, some points that you feel like uh, should, be, should be improved. Um, awesome. Thank you so much again for your work, guys. Um, next, I'm going to call for, for Mark, uh, what, for a section I've, I've called, what about the community? Oh no, you, you changed it. It's like, <laughs> I call it like, what the community? <laughs> it's a what the community. And I was like, is it a mistake or is it something you wanted to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Mark, can, can you update us on what has been going on uh, in the community dynamics recently? Yes, very good. Uh, hi, everyone. So this is a little weather update of the week. <laughs> um, so there are things, you know, so some things are not changing. Uh, there are still many people from around the world uh, coming to the platform uh, with... Uh, I, so we're going down a bit in terms of number of visitors coming uh, uh, to the platform per day uh, with around 300 people coming per day. Uh, and especially on the on the open COVID program page, uh, the thing that is different with before uh, is that there's something we we call a bounce rate. A bounce rate tells you if I'm a visitor of uh, Juggle, do I do I just come to the page and go back somewhere else, or do I stay? And so the bounce rate is the number of people that are just bouncing, like they're they're coming and they're immediately going somewhere else. And it's it's been going. Uh, down from 80% to 60%, which is a, a quite good uh, um, score, which means that the communities is kind of going more and more to a core of people that are coming because they have stuff to do on the platform, uh, so which is good. Uh, so still also, how do people come there? Uh, there is a still news article being published and that's something I'm in link with the communication team to kind of craft how we can use these uh, these indicators to understand a bit more uh, about uh, um, about the strategy of communication, uh, but there's a COVID-19 museum that is that has brought some people uh, and and some news, so some project and some um, some some news articles. Uh, 
Now, uh, on the Slack, which represents really the uh, uh, active core of the community, uh, we're still pretty steady. Uh, we've achieved, I think, now the uh, uh, final growth. So we have 1,200 people uh, in the Slack. We had around 30 coming since the past week, uh, almost 110 channels. Uh, and so, so what we looked at a bit was, uh, I should use a geographical map uh, of, of the Juggle users, but we looked at the one uh, that come to the Slack and, and Slack allows you to see the time zones that are uh, involved, and especially the time zones of the new people joining. Uh, and so that allows us to see that we had people from the West Coast uh, in the US, uh, from probably France, so from, from the uh, 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 Brussels time zone in Europe, from the East Coast, as well as some uh, Asian uh, uh, countries coming and, and South American. Uh, so that gives us a bit the breadth of the uh, past week uh, onboarding. Uh, and if you look at the new users, this week has been pretty heavy on bio, <laughs> biology skills, gene expression, diagnostic methods, etc. So the skill set is very, very uh, oriented to bio compared to more development the previous week. Uh, and that is reflected in the activity, uh, which has been very, very dominated uh, in the past week uh, with um, uh, nucleic acid amplification project, uh, as well as a syringe pump. Um, so another thing I was uh, talking about was the onboarding of, of new members. So last week we, we were seeing that new members which are in blue when they arrive on slack they go to program question support feedback and they don't easily go somewhere else afterwards uh, and there's been a, a work from the onboarding team to craft new uh, channels in yellow so looking for skills looking for projects etc and what you see is that the people uh, have been mingling much more with different channels on the slack so there's been a success in a way in allowing newcomers through these channels to get orientation towards places they need. So this is a very good uh, 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 indication that the, uh, wow, it's pouring rain indeed outside, Toma, you were right. Uh, <laughs> it's a good indication that the onboarding uh, uh, is, is going in the right direction. Uh, in terms of new channels, so the onboarding team has created those new channels like looking for a project, et cetera. Uh, there has also been uh, a new channel, the Open Cabin 19 Global South channel created. And I don't know, uh, Toma, if you want to comment that because I yeah, know it's, it's, um, it's part of uh, extending the, the, the program towards um, the countries, countries in the Global South. And so we have, uh, we have new, uh, new organizations and new members that are coming from those uh, countries that are really active. And uh, I wanted to plug them themselves also to this uh, to this initiative. So we've created this uh, um, Slack channel so that we can have a, a single place of discussion. Um, so if you're interested uh, in joining, don't hesitate. Uh, it's a it's one of the very active uh, channels too. Mm, great, great. Uh, and actually, that was that was all to finish on that. We still have meetings. If you want to join, you're welcome. Contact me. Uh, to ask more questions or to know more about these networks or I'm already in contact with the communication team to see how we can use that as measures of, of the uh, growth and impact uh, of the open COVID uh, community and how we can use that for measuring the impact of the communication uh, but for any other purposes don't hesitate to contact awesome. me. Awesome, thank you so much Mark. Um, so next, I'm going to call for Leo, who is going to provide us some, uh, with some updates on the Drupal platform and maybe some tips, I don't know. Yeah, uh, hi everybody. So uh, yeah, today I have a pretty cool uh, update about the Drupal platform. So we've, we've been working in a submarine mode for a bit on uh, uh, redoing the UX design of Drupal. And so we're, we're making really good progress. And so I thought I was going to uh, show uh, a little bit, uh, you know, what uh, what does design uh, sort of start to look like. Um, and so this is the uh, program page. So this is where we started at. And so we're, we're basically going to uh, be in the next uh, weeks, uh, like making a huge overhaul of, uh, of the entire Jogo uh, platform in terms of design. 
Um, and so you're going to be able to have a much better streamlined uh, platform and much better streamlined UX so that you guys can find the information that matters uh, faster and, and, uh, and easier. Um, and so, uh, so that's currently going. So we're, the next part we're going to work on is the project uh, so that you have better project page for uh, each, of, uh, each of you. So uh, stay tuned for this. Uh, it's going to be very soon, uh, you know, in the pipeline. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, and then in term of uh, with Mark, we, we've noticed that there is a, a bit of a slowdown in the number of, of uh, needs that were posted on the platform. So I just wanted to uh, maybe just show you a little bit uh, what the, 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 the flow uh, of, um, of, of posting a need is. And so basically, if you're on, on your project um, and you're uh, an admin of this project uh, or a member of this project, you can basically create new needs, right? So this is like something that uh, will then be available to everybody in the platform as a need. And for example, if you need, um, say, uh, a reagent for a PCR, Right, uh, which is something that you might need, and then you can uh, uh, like have some more details, right? And so, like, you, you need to add maybe some skills, or in this case, uh, that would be you know, uh, like like some resources, basically, because what I need is resources, right? Uh, and maybe actually, uh, you 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 want to add like you know that you need a mo like molecular biologist or something like this in the skills, right? And so once you created your need, uh, it's going to appear here and it's also going to appear globally on Drogo. Um, people can then come and comment on this and say, you know, uh, and basically like that they, they, they have something for you. And so you'll be able to receive notification that, you know, this is happening. And then once <laughs> this is over, uh, once this is done, right, you just basically need to come back to your need, right? and say close up uh, and i know the ux is not perfect we're definitely working on this and it's going to be so much better soon but at least for now this uh, like the functionalities are here so once you finish the need and the need is not um you know the need has been filled don't forget to come back and say close up this need which will then you know say at the top that this need has been completed so don't hesitate to use the needs for the platform and for people that are you know that have those capacities don't hesitate to go on the needs and you know search for the particular skills you may have or particular resources you may have to like find some needs that uh, you could help uh, with other projects. Yeah, that's it for me for today. Thank you much. Thank you so much, Leo. I love the fact that you said that I'm a biologist at Regents. <laughs> uh, so. So next, um, we're going to hear more about the working groups. Um, and uh, the first group, it will be the governance working group uh, with, uh, with Alex, who wants to make some announcement. Great, um, thank you. So I'm just gonna share my screen. Hold on one second. And I think Thomas, I need, uh, yeah, I need your help for that. So this is great, okay. Um, so I'll be speaking um, about a couple of updates from the governance group. Um, one of them, can you all see my screen right now? Yes. Okay, lovely. Um, one of them, Mark uh, spoke to a little bit. So I have two major updates. Um, one is the implementation of a new tool on Slack, which is the user groups. And the other one is a few new channels that I wanna um, call attention to. So first let's chat about the user groups. So user groups are a way to categorize the community members within Slack. So we have over 1200 community members. It's hard to know um, how to find the right people that we're looking for. So we have two different types of user groups and this is a tool that we rolled out this week. So we're still building it out and it's um, a tool that we'll be continuously adding to. So the first type of groups are community coordinator groups. So we have uh, guides, greeters, moderators, recruiters, a governance team, a communications team, a biosafety, biosecurity board. I'm not going to go into each of these in detail. There's a short description of each type of group 
in the user group tab, which you find by going into the people section on Slack and you click on the user group tab at the top. The important one that I'll come back to is the guides uh, user group. So uh, these are different types of community coordinators who are here to support project teams and make sure that you have everything you need to build out your solution. And then we have con community contributors, um, contributors, which is um, you know, an arbitrary term, but essentially it's the people that are, um, that are most of you that are doing the work. Um, so the project leads user group is one that we've been really working on this week. Um, so we have roughly 30 members of this user group. They are the, the leads on the, the most active projects in the community. And then we've added new user groups such as web developers, app developers, illustrators, community lab managers. There can be a, a very long list of these types of um, community uh, contributor user groups. These um, can be based on the skills that you have, um, you know, the, the, the type of work that you do. It can be a PhD student, it can be, um, you know, um, um, uh, depending on what you do for a living that can add value to this community. So the community coordinator groups, we're not looking to grow this list very long, but the community um, contributors can be a very long list of uh, different types of user groups. So I want to come back to the guides user group. The guides are the people that you will contact to either suggest a new user group or join a user group. So for now, we're keeping user groups closed in that um, you have to be an administrator on the platform to create a new one or edit the, the list of uh, members. Um, and that's to, to, since we're rolling this out, we're kind of testing it out. Uh, we want to um, keep a certain level of control, but as we implement it and as it grows, um, we'll open that up to the community as well. So for now, if you want to suggest a new user group or join a user group, um, just contact the guides group. So you would just go into the user group tab on Slack and contact any of the, the individuals in that user group. Um, so if you have questions, you can also reach out to me. Uh, this is my name, uh, Elise Mains here. Um, you can contact me with questions on this at all, if you have any. So uh, a quick shout out as well. We're, we're currently looking for more people to join these community coordinator groups, the guides, the greeters, the moderators, the recruiters. Um, we'll make a, a more official uh, call with more detail on this next week. But if you are interested in taking part in coordinating the community and helping organize this initiative, uh, please reach out to me or reach out to the guides group. Um, and uh, yeah, I highly, highly encourage you to, to contact us um, to suggest more user groups to help organize the, these 1,200 uh, plus people that we have in this community. And then the second announcement I'd like to share is these three looking for channels. Um, so depending on what you're looking for, if it's an existing project that you wanna uh, participate in, you would, look, you would post in the looking for a project channel. If you're looking for resources, uh, hardware, 3D printer, lab space, um, different things that are area specific, you would post in the looking for resources channel. And if you're looking for specific skills um, or expertise, you would post in the looking for skills channel. Um, so take a screenshot of this slide or refer back to it later to help you um, navigate the community, to help you meet the needs of your projects. Um, and you can also, for any of these situation contacts, the, contact the recruiters uh, user group who are here to help uh, match projects with the needs that they have to um, help them be um, successful in their in their project. So that's that's my update on my end. Um, again, my name is Alix, so feel free to reach out to me if you have questions. And uh, looking forward to continuing to develop uh, this user group tool and these three channels. Back awesome. to you, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Alix. Um, and I think, I think this event is very important as we're trying here to, uh, again, uh, experiment how we can better organize this community and then really provide a, a place for, for, for you members of the community to really, you know, have uh, a, a play, you know, in how we, uh, how this community actually advance uh, as a whole. And um, so we don't have like the magical solution. We're trying many things and trying to learn. And at the end, we try to report as much as we can on what, what fails and what works. 
Uh, so everything will be documented and at some point and will be, uh, will be accessible. Um, another thing is, a lot of things are happening on Slack because so far, uh, Jogo's platform is not um, advanced enough to support actually such big community discussions, mostly, and, uh, and interactions. Uh, and we're working very hard on that. And, uh, and everything we're experimenting on Slack, basically, we, at some point, uh, be translated onto Jogo. And uh, the, next, the next thing that uh, you know, Leo is, and the developers have been working a lot on is the notification system uh, and the recommendation system. So that, that will, when it could be in place, will improve drastically the, the user experience of Jogo. Uh, at least we hope so. Um, and uh, so the, the, next, the next part is going to be calling Camille. Um, Camille, do you want to, uh, to present some of the announcements? Um, if you can make it um, as short as possible, that would be great. Um, as we have yeah, it. No worries. Can you hear yeah. me well? Yes. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think what, what Thomas said is super important. Like, we're not trying to uh, do double work, but actually use both the Juggle platform and the Slack um, the best way we can to actually push the project forward. So, on one hand, use the Slack as much as you want and get involved in the coordination. Uh, don't forget to use Joggle as needed and like uh, Mark Neal and the whole team is going to be uh, much making your needs, your skills and, and people's skills. Um, just a very, uh, my update is going to be very short. Uh, check out the billboard information. Uh, this is where you find all the right document and all the single source of trust. Um, and also we are creating a um, code of conduct um, and a crisis management process so that these initiatives, you can feel safe in it and then we ensure that you, you are in the safe space. So if you, um, we are also creating a, a committee around this, but if you have any issue on Slack, please reach out to me or Alex uh, in the meantime and um, we'll, be, we'll be taking charge and reaching out to people to uh, mediate um, everything. So yeah, we want to make it a safe space. Uh, you have, yeah, so do, you please reach out to us if you encounter any, any problem. Um, we are, yeah, you can find us, well, on the governance meeting. I think you have this information in the agenda. I just want to also let you know that as we are working forward with the onboarding, if you'd like to participate in these activities, we're setting a weekly meeting every Tuesday at uh, 6 p.m. UTC uh, time, which is, uh, which is uh, 8 p.m. in Paris. So you're very welcome to join, and we're looking forward to see you there. And that is all for me. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Th thank you, Camille. Um, so uh, next, we're going to want to hear more about the working groups on communications uh, with Hans. Hey everyone, this is Hans from the communications team uh, with a quick update. So just like last week, we've uh, posted several things on social media. So as always, if uh, you follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and you engage with our post, that would really help us out. So putting a comment, sharing it or liking it uh, really helps us get the, the pages off the ground. And that will definitely be useful because the second announcement is that we will be uh, posting a, a list of needs uh, from the, the successful project. So if you're part of a project that successfully gotten a micro grant, please get in touch with us with anything you'd like to ask for on social media. It could be if you need people with certain skills or if you need volunteers or contributors, etc. Please tell us on the, the communication Slack channel, or you can also contact me uh, by direct message uh, at hands. And we'll take all of those uh, needs and then post them up on our, on our pages. And that's it for me. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Hans. Um, so don't hesitate, as uh, Hans said, to, to check out the, the new social media handles uh, for the Open, Open COVID-19 initiative. It's at Open COVID-19. Um, also, we have, uh, as I was saying last week, we have uh, this new partnership with, uh, with Mercury, um, and uh, we have some representatives. We have Ewan here, uh, who is uh, the, the, the director of the, of, uh, I don't know how to say this in English, of the redaction. 
uh, of the publishing um, at, at Mercury. Um, and so they will be um, writing about you guys, about the, the whole uh, work you're putting up uh, as, a, as a team, as a community uh, for the COVID-19 uh, crisis, and especially um, covering the, the, the winning project, like the, the project that went through the review, the reviewing uh, applications. And, um, and so that's, that's very important because the, they will, basically you will be contacted uh, by them uh, so that the, you know, they will be asking you questions to, that we really understand what you're doing, what the status, what, what are some of your needs, your perspective you know, in, within this initiative. And we'll be using this also as a way to, uh, to promote you guys, but also to promote more generally actually the approach of this initiative uh, around the world. And the articles will be both written in French and in English, uh, and will be shared on their platform and also on, uh, on our own, uh, probably a medium uh, still to be defined. Uh, so uh, thank you, I want to be here. Uh, maybe you can say hi. <laughs> uh, hi, everybody. Elsa is with me too. Elsa is going to contact you soon. Awesome. Thank you, Elsa, too. Yeah. Um, so you'll be hearing more from us um, soon, very soon. Um, so there is also, uh, so Sophie Lin is saying that uh, it's a good chance to, uh, to talk about the, the press guideline that we pre prepared a few weeks ago. Absolutely. Uh, and maybe you can, uh, yes, put the link to these uh, guidelines, uh, Sophie, in the, in the chat. That would be fantastic. So next, we want to hear more about the student engagement working group uh, with Pauline. Hi. So over the past few weeks, what we've been really doing is trying to build up the channel. We've been meeting and learning a lot of things that we've met with um, you, uh, Dreamscape Academy webinars. And last week, we also got a chance, thanks to John Urbanek, to go to a meeting of America's education leaders talking about how to engage students. So now that we have all this information, we have to sit, we have to coordinate how we want to plan going forward. So with that in mind, I don't have a fancy background, but I do have a paper sign. So we do have um, a, we're going to start having weekly meetings. So this week it's going to be Thursday at 4 p.m. UTC, but going forward, we will be meeting at Fridays at 5 p.m. UTC. Please note the um, hand-drawn mask pair. Just imagine it's doing its head thing. Um, so, so with that said, what we've kind of launched onto is that I had a friend who is a med student reach out to me and say, hey, a lot of, of students had stuff in the summer that is now canceled. Is there something we can do? And we're going to use that as a launching point to see if we can create a project for them to become more involved. Mm -hmm. So another thing I want to point out, and I'll put the link here, is that we have also opened up a new protocols full folder just as an extra resource and so if you have any like protocols or projects like lab projects that you think can be done at home with little um need to buy like you know a, P a pcr or like a centrifuge please drop them here and i think that would be a great students stu resource for students who are just still looking to get some lab work in but because all the lab courses are canceled or moved online they don't have that opportunity so once again please join us this thursday at 4 p.m utc to talk about coordinating for the program going forward um, can i um just mention something since we can't raise our hand in the function is um i was on their last meeting and it was just <laughs> three people so I know everybody's busy, but I mean, it's super important. There are a ton of students that are in Jogal, um, and I, I'm not allowed to make like an announcement on the announcements page, I think I tried, but um, just if you have a few minutes during their meeting time on Thursday, please pop in. Um, I know they'd really appreciate it. And if you're a student, please pop in, because there were two students in me. Um, it's not enough. <laughs> um, and anyway, just to throw that out there. Thank awesome. you. Yeah, th th thank you so much, Pauline, for all your work uh, and, 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 you know, in USAR. So um, 
I think we, what, what we've been doing is we've been in contact also with some, uh, some students' organizations, uh, for example, in France. And so I think, I think we need to send them um, like, a, like kind of a package uh, so that they can share these uh, like clear information to their network. Um, that, would be, that would be, I think, much, much easier. Um, great. Um, so now we're getting into the best part of this call, uh, which is to hear from you guys uh, the pro you know, projects uh, of these initiatives. And, and because we've uh, announced yesterday the, the, the project that won also the, the second round of, uh, of Drogo Microgrants, we'll be hearing from them too. Um, and so the first project we want to hear uh, from, and basically I'm just going to throw the list here. So uh, Bastian uh, with uh, Quantified Fruit Project. Uh, and I know that, so uh, I have to applaud you guys with like all the other project leaders here because you've actually used very well this agenda where you put actually great points about the main news of your project. So this is fantastic. Thank you so much for that. Uh, so to you, Bastian. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. Hey, everyone. I can keep it short. So we are very happy to announce that we already fulfilled the first thing we said we would be doing with the micro grant, which is making a public data API. And this is up online since yesterday afternoon already. So now you can get all the public data that people use. Could, could you remind us a bit like what is a uh, um, so, yeah, sure. So in, just to make use of the 60 seconds. <laughs> so we use the like wearable devices like uh, Apple Watches, Fitbits and so on to collect physiological data on body temperature and heart rate. And people also ongoingly collect their symptoms. So every day they are filing a report of whether they had any symptoms and if so, what those symptoms were. And this data then we can start correlating once we have like a larger data set. So it's around 120 people right now that are doing this every day, but we are hoping to scale it up more, but also we get the data longitudinally. So that's really nice. And all the data is now publicly available through an API. So you can just program your data visualizations very easily or just download CSVs of all the data people have made public. That's the, the main use from us. And because the community has shown so much interest, we have switched our community call schedule to doing it weekly. So every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific time, 7 p.m. Paris time, you can join us and chat about the project with us if you want. And that's it from our side. Thank you so much, Bastian. And congrats again for the micro grant. Um, Thanks. <laughs> the next project is uh, the Supporting Students STEM Education in Nigeria by uh, Oba Segun. Oba, are you here? Hello, everyone. Hello. Uh, um, so, um, uh, yeah, hi. Can you see me? Is it clear? We can't hear you very well, but let's try. Hello? Yeah. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Hello, can you hear me? Is it clear? Yes, yes, we can. Okay. Perfect. All right. So, um, so uh, yeah. So the, the the project is about um, creating um, a supporting uh, online platform for um, students who are out of school during the COVID nineteen um, lockdown issue. Um, so um, basically, it's to create digital content that um, targets um, science curriculums in Nigeria here and um, work with the um, Ministry of Education um, to push that online and. Um, uh, and see how it grows with students come on it and use it and learn from it. We also have a, 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 a vote microscope, um, which is more or less like a home use microscope. Um, so we also would get that to push that to students who want to use it to their homes so that they could also learn um, and theory online via the platform and also do some of the practicals um, which would also um, show them on the platform at home. So, so far, what we've been able to do is um, build a, uh, start a conversation with um, community of teachers, which we have here, who would create this digital content and um, also uh, get the uh, Ministry of Education on board um, to uh, walk through all the steps with us. Uh, so that's, that's it so far. Awesome. 
Thank you, thank you, Aba, and uh, congratulations again for the micro grant. Um, next project okay. is the basic respirator from Hunter. Hunter, are you here? Hi, yeah, I'm here. Um, so first of all, thank you. And sorry if my dog is working. Um, thank you, thank you for this opportunity. I'm really excited, and thank you to Catherine Rowe for telling me about Jogal and the platform. So I, I found out about it through LinkedIn, um, and I'm very grateful. Um, so I've been sticking to the schedule that's been in the timeline that I, that I established and even making a, a little bit more progress. Um, USC Keck Medicine at the University of Southern California Labs um, has agreed to test my initial version of the masks with non-medical grade Tyvek. So they're going to test um, fitting, sterilization, and toxicity. I'm not sure about what the toxicity test is going to be, but I'll find out from them. Um, and then when I, when I hear the results, um, I'll post them. Um, and um, I've also ordered test kit supplies so I can do my own fit testing at home with the different versions that I have. Um, interestingly, the um, test kits are also on back order. So it's like about two, two to three months for back order. So I'll be releasing an open, open, uh, open source design for test kit hoods um, as a part of this project. And then um, lastly, I um, just started a work with an organization called Challenge America. Um, they're affiliated with the um, Veterans Health Administration, which is either the largest or one of the largest hospital uh, groups in the U.S. Um, and so they have an innovations program. They've, um, they've contacted the Denver Police Department, um, who has a request for a respirator design. So I'm going to propose the basic respirator, um, not in the Tyvek version, but in a, a functional fabric. So I'm gonna start exploring some options for that, something like a Kevlar or a ballistic nylon. Um, I might have a need from the community, like uh, someone that understands material science and whether or not a functional fabric would be appropriate for this design. Um, so, but I'm expanding, expanding the project from health, just healthcare workers to um, more first line responders. Um, so again, if I, if I make progress on that project, I'll be presenting, um, presenting on Sunday. Um, so I will, uh, I will post and yeah, that's it. So thank you again. Yeah. Um, thank, thank you, Hunter. Uh, and I think it goes very well with, uh, with the, with the dog here. <laughs> 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 and, uh, and, uh, <laughs> and then finally, uh, congratulations, congratulations again. I think you have some, some, uh, comments in the chat, um, regarding your questions, uh, I believe. Oh, okay. And, um, and so, yeah, a sterilization chamber would be amazing. Yeah. Um, so probably you can you can uh, start talking in the in the in the chat or in the Slack. Probably. Uh, yeah. Great. But thank you again. Uh, the next project we want to hear about is the bioreactor project by Adrienne. Oh hi Thomas and thank you everybody for uh, listening to this. So uh, the bioreactor is is basically for producing reagents. That's so it's very clear. That's uh, how it's optimized. So we, we got uh, we are pretty much on schedule. We uh, we finished ordering the uh, the primers for the for creating the new plasmids. So we started working on those, and we expect to have them ready by probably next week. Uh, we are still awaiting for some important hardware parts. That's uh, some of the distributors are a little bit slow on that, but uh, we we got so, uh, most of them anyway. Uh, so we are developing some of the software modules using the uh, sensor that we already have and at the, at the point when we're going to get all of them, we're going to assemble them together. Uh, yesterday we have finalized the uh, first, first version of the PCB, so the electronics uh, part of it. Uh, we don't really need that one except when, when you do like a big production, but for now it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a nice to have. And uh, we created the first version of the uh, base uh, rocker which uh, uh, and we are working on the second one now if i can see how i can share my screen yeah this should work and this is how it works like so this is going to be the base of the the bioreactor uh, the bags is going to stay in here and uh, everything is going to be cooked nicely inside so uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. I hope I stayed in within the 60 seconds. And uh, thank you, everybody on this team, for the wonderful work you're doing. You're welcome. Thank you so much to you, Adrienne. Uh, we're looking forward to hear more uh, more updates. Um, and congratulations again for you were part of the first round of the of the of the macro grants. Um, 
Next, we want to hear more about the Open Source Range Pump project uh, that is being led uh, by Sina. Sina, are you here? Yeah, hello. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Let me just turn on my screen. I love um, your background. <laughs> SpongeBob. It's one of my favorite shows. So for those of you who don't know, my name is Sina Buasagi. I'm a third year PhD student at the university. Actually, it's not a university. It's the California Institute of Technology. I just woke up. It's even though it is like an almost 10 a.m. here. Uh, so I've been working with a really awesome team to develop an open source syringe pump to deploy in hospitals um, since there's a lack uh, of syringe pumps. So I'll just give a quick update. Um, there's another team that's also been working on a syringe pump called Electrolab. It seems like they have a nice finalized design. So a lot of our members have been helping in the manufacturing of this pump and it will undergo clinical evaluation um, at some Paris hospitals. Um, but in addition, we're still continuing with the design improvements made to the Poseidon syringe pump, which is the syringe pump that I had developed as part of my PhD. Um, we, it, we're making it quite easy to manufacture. The parts are easily sourceable with a simple design, error-free build and usage. Um, a, a cool note, um, we were able to get a sheet metal bender so we can actually encapsulate the entire device in sheet metal, which makes it quite easy to clean. Um, and also, I'm working with uh, a guy who's really good at, at, at doing control boards. His name is Arthur Wolf. I don't know if he's on the call right now, uh, but he's been adapting one of his projects called the Smoothie Board, which, uh, which allows a user to control multiple CNC machines. Um, we're using that actually to control multiple syringe pumps. So we have been iterating on the prototype, uh, at least on the Poseidon side, and we're really, really close to a final version that's going to be shipped to, to all of our collaborators for testing. Um, yeah, I think that's all I got. Fantastic. Um, thank you, Sina. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a very promising project, and, uh, and it, it plugs basically into um, what other projects are doing uh, regarding uh, treatment of the coronavirus, uh, such as respirators, and, and, and personal protective equipment. And at the end, uh, as I was saying in the beginning, I don't know if whether Sina, we try to, uh, to combine all those elements together to create uh, an open ICU um, that, can, that could be just you know, built uh, everywhere locally um, because it's open source and low cost. Um, so thank you again for, for all your work uh, and the team. Um, and congrats again for winning the, uh, this round uh, micro grant. Um, the next project uh, is encapsulating the mammoth biosciences test in E. coli, and I'm going to call Sophie. Hi, everyone. My name is Sophie, and for those who don't know me, I'm a senior at Newport High School in Seattle, Washington, and I'm really involved in the iGEM team that was at SoundBio. So our test is basically um, to take all the enzymes involved in the mammoth biosciences tests and cloning them into E. coli so that they're a lot more accessible and easy to store because handling CRISPR and guide RNA is really sensitive and unstable. So by put it, encapsulating it in E. coli, it would be much easier to ship around the world. And currently we are working on cloning because we have all the primers assembled and all the sequences uploaded in Benchling, and that's the state of the test right now. All right, <laughs> thank you, Sophie. Um, and congratulations again uh, for winning uh, a Drogo Macro Grant. Um, the next project is Corona Detective uh, with Rachel, Fran, Guy, Scott, and Arvins, uh, who would like to speak for this project. I can say something and other people can join in too. I'll be real quick. Um, we're really happy that we finally got to do some experiments in the lab. Uh, we got our first results with cellular RNAs that are detected with the method. And um, we really hope that um, we'll be getting the, the positive control plasmids very soon and um, do more tests with the different um, primer sets that we've ordered and so on. And I was really lucky with our distributor here in Switzerland who gave me a whole bunch of other little freebies and so on, clean water and um, even an RNA extraction kit that I use. So I only looked at my own um, in cheek cells for the cellular RNA that gave good results. And we really have had this battle with an old qPCR machine. And I'm just wondering 
one thing I was hoping is to hear if anybody here knows anybody who works at Thermo Fisher. Any, anyone? Just let me know, please. Because we're trying to, um, we have to calibrate the machine for it to do a proper run. But we've hacked it anyway, we got some results. And anyone else want to say something, Aravind, Guy? Yeah, I think that I would just quickly add that uh, we have also onboarded uh, Sri Lanka Institute of Nanotechnology. There are full uh, uh, full time two PhD candidates allocated by the the institute for this project. They'll be focusing on uh, uh, you know optimizing the primers for the, the the viral strain that they have. Probably it's, it's different from what we have in Europe and in different parts of the world. And uh, and they have a BSL two lab with the bioreactor and lyophilizer and like you know qPCR and PCR and a minus 80 degree freezer and pretty much they have a lot of infrastructure and um, they will be supporting us uh, in this project. And so that we have created the channel of uh, the, the global, pers uh, glo global South uh, for the global South perspective so that we can try to produce all those primers and enzymes locally. Yeah, that's, that's great to hear. Um, thank you. Um, anyone else from this project? I guess that was already a lot. Um, so <laughs> um, thank you again. Um, and uh, the next project is going to be uh, optimizing the NEB lamp test with Alan, Chris, Sarah, Izzy, Aubrey, and Mike. OK, can you guys hear me this time? This mm -hmm. is Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I'll go ahead and start, and uh, anybody else could jump in. So I'm just going to reference the notes that I put in so I don't forget anything and I don't go too long. Um, so we're doing optimizing the NEB lamp test. Um, we've pretty much almost done everything we said we would do with our grant. Um, and then we're continuing as well. So we've assessed four primer sets, um, and we've excluded one already, which is the Mammoth N primer set. Um, we are optimizing at the end of optimization for another one. And we just heard from um, somebody at NEB that he gave us some sequences that haven't even been published yet to try that they've been having a lot of success on. So we're beginning that assessment. Um, we are also shifting away from DNA positive control and plasmid and twist synthetic to, towards twist synthetic plasmids and the Zeptometrics inactivated actual virus. Um, so in BioBlaze and um, Lizzie Blossom labs, we um, yesterday were able to detect the actual virus with this test. So that's super exciting. And um, upcoming steps are we would love to start testing actual patient samples at the CDC that Chris Monaco has access to and also contact Florian Schulte again, um, who has access to samples in German hospitals. And the overall eventual goal would be to make our own master mix so we're not depending on buying it from NEB and that it'll, it'll be cheaper and more accessible worldwide. Um, so anyone else, <laughs> please add what you would like to say for this project. Yeah, I have just a minor note. There was a discussion in the biosafety group about whether or not um, the the inactivated virus and the viral RNAs that Twist was making, what biosafety level they should be, because there was some confusion, um, particularly about the virus, because ATCC was calling it BSL one. I mean, we've pretty much um, that everyone seems to be in agreement that working with inactivated virus is BSL two, but there was some question left about the viral RNAs. Um, I contacted Twist yesterday and got an email back from them that uh, had the exact sequences of what was in, you know, the five different pieces that they're shipping out. And um, basically the genome is fragmented such that there's really no chance it's ever going to come back together in any meaningful way. Some of the RNAs are missing their poly A tails. I mean, I my company has decided it's BSL-1. <laughs> I mean, and, and I agree with that um, regardless. So I just want to throw that out there. And I posted the actual reply and uh, put the sequence data in our folder for anyone else who has to justify the use of it for their project. Great. 
Anyone else from the project? That's already a lot again. Um, <laughs> so thank you so much. Uh, great advancements. Um, and I'm going to call for the next project, which is called Global Free Webinars uh, by Eugenia. Hi. Hello. Um, so thank you very much, first of all, for the opportunity of, to develop this project. Um, we're very happy. And um, so for you will find already in the project page, if you are not looking at the at the file for this call, uh, in any case, you will find it in the project files. Um, we have uh, created already a webinar request form that has been already filled by at least 20 schools. So um, we are very happy. It was like one day that we had this, this form and we even only sent it like privately. We didn't even share it uh, a lot. And we already have 20 requests of, of lectures and we have another uh, form for lecture volunteering. So if you know people that might be interested in participating in these uh, webinars as lecturers, either um, because they have a background in virology or in public health or in epidemiology or in anything that might be um, pertinent for the prices, uh, please don't hesitate to share around the, the forms to volunteer for uh, lecturers. Um, for now, what the versions are in, so the forms are in English and in Spanish, but we're working on a French version and we will continue um, expanding the amount of, of uh, languages available for the forms. Um, in other news, we already confirmed today uh, webinars in Argentina and in Portugal, and we are still debating dates in Estonia, Bulgaria, Romania, Ghana, Poland, Nepal and India. So it's getting very global and we're very happy about it. And so if you want to uh, see a bit more, there's a, I left a link to the, to the page of Lectures Without Borders and you can contact me in Slack and continue to talk about this. So uh, that's it and thank you very much. <laughs> thank you so much, Eugenia. Uh, it sounds very exciting. Uh, and congrats again for the, for the micro grant. Um, so um so that's it for the 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 reviewed projects and so we also have a, a place for new projects to speak up and so i'm going to call uh for a project called diy bio vs covid19 uh do we have someone from this project yeah. yes yeah. um let me see if i can just uh my screen okay I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Okay. Can you guys see it okay? Yes. Okay. So, yeah, I would like to introduce myself very quick. My name is Antonio Lamb. I'm based in Basel and I'm at the University of Basel. Uh, we're working to, on a project that complements the existing work of the diagnostic teams on the Open COVID initiative. Um, and basically what we're trying to do is test out very common, commonly used materials to see whether they can be used to, uh, for the LAMP PCR assay that people are developing in the group. Um, and it's a multifaceted project and we just want to show that it's capable to use do-it-yourself biology or do it together depending on uh, which group you speak to, but basically commonly used hardware to try to um, develop this RT lamp test. And the main project that we wanted to start with is testing out how temperature affects the reaction. And so um, if I can find the screen here. We've, we've detailed our first experiment on the joggle page, uh, which is relatively straightforward, but we want to test out some very common materials that would be used for this reaction and see how user-friendly they are in a um, very DIY environment. And the, the goal, of course, is that eventually, um, working with the other groups, we find some conditions that are, are good and some materials that can produce this test very well and that are easily accessible. Um, we would be able to share these protocols and materials uh, in order to make the procedure as cheap and easy and user-friendly as possible. Um, so that's it from my side. And uh, we're definitely gonna be getting input from the existing teams um, on how best to move this project forward, but this is basic, the basic design of the experiment and what the funding will be used for. So 
again, very grateful for the opportunity to do this, and uh, we look forward to working with the rest of the team. Awesome. Uh, definitely get in contact with uh, with all the teams. Um, thank you so much. I would be also calling uh, Angela Peebles. Uh, he, she is one of the recipient of, uh, of the Drogo micro grants. Um, and uh, yes. Hi, thank hi. you. Uh, for, <laughs> hi, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity and um, for the funding. I'm uh, really excited to be able to share these masks with folks here in Niagara. So I'm in Niagara Falls, um, Ontario, Canada, and I uh, developed a mask made from like one sheet of halyard wrap and it's, um, it's made without a lot of equipment required. So basically a stapler and a glue gun is all that you need. And it's uh, quite compact, like that's when it's folded up. And that's what it looks like when it's un opened up. Um, so I really appreciate the, the opportunity. One of the roadblocks I've been running into here in Niagara is that um, we have healthcare workers that are asking for masks. They are only being pre uh, like offered one mask a day and they're wanting to, or they're being required to reuse them. Um, but the masks that folks are making from the community and supplying are not being allowed to be used in any of the healthcare settings. So it's a bit of a challenge. And so I was hoping when I, when I entered the mask for the funding, I um, was wanting to get funding to be tested. And I'm quite happy actually with the feedback that I was told there is, and I can't wait to see it so I can use that feedback, which was that there wasn't really in the opinion of a lot of the folks who were reviewing it, there wasn't really um, a need for that testing because of the fact that the material itself had been thoroughly tested. So um, the funding I'm super grateful for, but I'm also really looking forward to this other piece of the puzzle so I can use that to back up my mask when people are saying, well, we can't, we can't use that mask because it's not a medical grade mask. And in fact, um, I contact, so we're, we have like a, three levels of government here. So we have a municipal and a, a regional government and the regional government uh, is who takes care of our medical system. There are 12 municipalities. So I got in touch with someone from the region to see if these masks can be donated. And I got the same answer back that the health sectors, long-term care, EMS, et cetera, are required to use medical and surgical grade masks. So it, I'm again, looking forward to these reviews so I can use some of that uh, feedback about the fact that the material has already been tested to sort of back up my mask. So, so the funding I'm grateful for, but also the feedback is equal as important. And also Hunter, um, I am very interested to hear about like how you can do your own fit testing and your open source design for test kits, because it's something that I have been running into challenges here is to find somehow to get tested here in Canada actually. Yes, um, I, I was gonna, I was actually just typing you a message that we should get together because I think we're running into the same roadblocks and certainly with with uh, with testing, I'm happy to share any information I yes, have. Yes, actually, so we'll, yeah, we'll message each other or however it works. I mean, the awesome. other part of this whole thing is, is that I'm learning all of these new platforms too at the same time. So this has been <laughs> quite the experience for sure. But Hunter, I, I definitely will get in touch with you because I see that we have the same challenges and maybe we can collaborate somehow. So this is great. great. This is what this is this open source is about, right? So yeah, yeah. it's exciting. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank 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 you, Angela. Um, all right. And so the, the the last project I'm going to call is uh, is from Bryce. Um, Bryce, are are you here? Uh, yes I'm here. Would you like to introduce the the project would like to uh, to talk about? Okay, I'll say that uh, unlike most people here, I am not a biologist. My wife is, but uh, I'm an engineer. So my contribution so far has been in high volume manufacturing, helping a face shield project uh, uh, use die cutting to cut thousands and thousands of face shields. But my interest is in early detection. So rather than waiting for people to get sick and then be diagnosed, uh, find out where viruses spreading in public, on surfaces, in sewage. Uh, and I'm really interested in finding where other people are doing that at early community surveillance. Uh, two great resources. Uh, one, uh, Biobot in Somerville, Massachusetts is doing sewage testing. And I'm helping our local sewage agency to become part of that project. And swapping of public surfaces. Uh, this doesn't seem to be something that's 
many people are doing, but it seems like it could have community and crowdsource potential. Uh, discover whether your public transit services or supermarket checkouts have COVID-19. Is that, is, that some, is, that, is that a project you'd like to, to, to lead uh, yourself or is it more to look for information about what already exists out there? Uh, anytime you start a new project, it's wise to see what's out there already rather than yeah. duplicating an effort. And that's why I sat in on this call. Okay, so actually if you look at the, the chat, Ellen has been putting out uh, some, uh, some link uh, to Chris Masson's work. Uh, they've been doing some environmental swabbing um, and you're right, uh, there was a, an article recently uh, saying that in Paris, in the, we found actually viruses trace, um, traces in the sewage. Um, not in the water, in the proper water, but in the sewage, sewage yes. Um, all right, um, so um, this is basically the end of this call. Uh, but before we go, uh, we are going to, I'm going to actually to say one more thing. <laughs> Uh, that we forgot, which is actually a pretty good, pretty big thing, I would say. Um, it's the fact that the platform is now actually, the Drogo platform is now also in Spanish. Uh, <laughs> we forgot to say it. Now we have four languages, French, English, that's German, good. and Spanish. Um, so, so, so that's good. So if you, if, if you have friends uh, that are Spaniards and uh, speak only Spanish, uh, they'll be able to, you know, move around on the platform uh, by themselves. Um, so now is the time for our classical uh, group picture. And so what I'm going to do is call for all of you to activate your video stream so that we can, uh, we can see uh, your face uh, and the nice background that you have. Um, and we're going to say hi to the people that will watch this video again afterwards on the social medias. Um, so I don't know if, uh, Ellen, do you want to activate your video? Yes, awesome. We've got everyone this time. All right, so ready? Say hi. <laughs> awesome. All right, thank you so much, everyone. I'm going to cut the recording now and see you soon on Drogo and Slack. Bye bye. All right, thank you. <laughs>